Smoky Hollow really developed back around the 1870s because it was a part of a former plantation that was in this particular area. The height of the community with the families, uh, the old, over 80 black families, their businesses, their churches, whatever, was the most thriving period between 1940 up to around the late 1960s. Smoky Hollow was one of Tallahassee's black communities during the days of segregation. It was nestled just east of the capital, roughly where Cascades Park lies. Today, the old Smoky Hollow is just a childhood memory to some of its surviving residents. Well, the community was such that, yeah, um, I'm sure we all knew each other. From the standpoint, you could, didn't have air conditioning, the windows were open, you could hear other people's music, you can smell other people's food that they were cooking, um, and, and you knew the people. So if <clears throat> anybody had an abundance of something that they could share, if pears were in or somebody gave you a lot of pears, they would share them with the neighborhood. And likewise with any other things. So it was a time where people collectively work together to succeed, to help each other, to do the best that they could. People tend to know everybody in the community. We tend to visit everybody in the community and from people who live on this side of the track and those who live on the other side of the track. I remember very clearly going over to Miss Patsy's house. Um, she used to have cows and gardening and so we used to milk the cow and have so much fun doing that. A lot of times people aren't realizing that as you look back you're dealing with segregation and so they were obviously they my parents were a lot more cautious and looked out for their children as it relates to trying to minimize our exposure to the harshness of the times. In 1957 conversion of the two-lane Perry Highway into today's four-lane Appalachian Parkway lopped off the north side of Smoky Hollow and created a grand approach to the state capitol. A majestic sight indeed. Florida's capitol building with its tall white columns. In the Tallahassee Democrat, there are articles on file and all where um, there was the complaint that there was this slum in the face of the capitol because this three blocks up the hill was the capital. So the word was that that kind of a situation shouldn't exist in the face of the capital. There's no question that this particular uh, community was demolished as a result of eminent domain. Some called it urban renewal. The state started moving residents out of Smoky Hollow, claiming the need to expand state offices. In late 1964, they broke ground on a new Department of Transportation building. Today, we have the new Cascades Park and a Smoky Hollow Memoriam has been erected at the corner of Franklin Boulevard and East Pensacola Street. A couple of the old resident structures still exist up on Marvin Street, and as it turns out, the actual barber shop that served the Smoky Hollow neighborhood has survived. The barber shop almost was not saved because as we worked on Smoky Hollow Village, we had no knowledge of, we knew that the barbershop existed, but we didn't know that physically it was still somewhere. Originally thought to reside near the intersection of Lafayette Street and Swanee Boulevard, the restored barbershop has now been added to the Smoky Hollow Memoriam. Like it is now, barbershops tend to be the place where people want to come and hang out for a minute while they're getting their haircuts. But it's also a place where people really got a lot of the issues sounded out. You know, it's a sounding board and a place where folks could share, you know, and they felt comfortable in doing so. Very open communication going on. This is another family named the Whites. They live next door to the barbershop. And Velma, one of the daughters, um, said she, the cars were parking up and down the street and the people would gather there to find out what the latest news was or to talk and meet other people or, and or get their hair cut. And so we would hang out every once in a while and you know wanted to get their hair cuts. And the folks who were out here were, you know, they were eating peanuts and talking trash and telling stories and 
playing checkers and things like that. So we would listen in a lot of times and hear what the stories were and what was going on in the community. So it was a big area for find out what's going on in the area if you want to know what's happening in the community. And now I would hear stories from my older siblings uh, and my brother David, he said Mr. Powell could cut your hair and be like he's sleep. And he, he said the story in there, he could em be embellishing, but he said somebody got up out of the chair one time, left him up there cutting, so. And there were people who weren't necessarily from the community, who were coming from other communities over here to get their hair cut. And so it was a chance for people to uh, connect up and find out what's happening. But it was a great space. Um, uh, according to what I've learned from my, my cousins and my brothers, they all say this was the place to be. You know, as young people, you know, listen to the men and talking and getting the advice they needed to grow forward, you know, to grow up as young men, you know, respecting themselves and the value of education and how important it was to uh, take care of your families and those types of things, life lessons they learn here. In Smoky Hollow, for WFSU Public Media, I'm Mike Plummer.